Oh no. Oh no. Oh my. Stay tuned till the end if you want to see a tutorial on how I get my hair like this because I've had a lot of questions about it and so this time I actually filmed it. So I'll throw that at the end. A little voiceover. What is up guys? Welcome back. Hi. <laughs> I am recovering pretty well from my tonsil situation. I'm still not gonna scream at you like I usually do. <laughs> I'm self-aware enough to know that I do that. But, oh man, oh man. I had, I had to get on camera and talk about the new blushes from Pat McGrath because I have been personally like, you know how you have inside jokes? I'm like having an inside hype about this. Like it's just me hyping me about these blushes. And it's because I have a history, right, of being so, obsessed as the influencers say with her original blush without caution skin fetish divine blushes right so the three colors that I did pick up are Aphrodite Amour, Divine Rose 2, and Venusian Sunrise and I didn't actually end up picking up any of the like bronzer looking tones of this blush I ended up trying to buy things that were a comparable to the ones that I already had for the sake of review, but B, the ones that I, th I thought looked the most flattering to not just my skin tone, but my skin uh, undertones, right? So she does make just really across the board inclusive makeup. She did Bridgerton, right? There was like every possible skin tone in that show, right? Every undertone, everything, and everything was just dialed into perfection. And that's why I always come back to her is her formulas and also her, her just, her beautiful mind, <laughs> her beautiful color sense, artistic, creative mind. I did already shoot this look coming together and I will share with you guys some initial surprises that I had before we even jump into that footage. So first of all, I do find these to be more main character energy than the ones that I had before. Even the ones that I have seen swatched that I don't have from her original collection, these are more, not even more pigmented, they're more committed colors. They're more saturated colors. So even the most, I would say like chill one that I got here, Aphrodite Amour. This one is still quite saturated with that pink right there. I always described that I could use the original blushes and just check out. I could just totally lose time. This is something that you, you need to pay attention to no matter what shade you buy. And to me, that says this is not a gimmick. This is not a release of the same blush but just done in like a duo pack for the sake of jacking the price up a little bit. I think they are a little bit more expensive and, you know, selling you the same product just with like a gimmicky, you know, duo of colors. And I do think it would be difficult to get a brush in just one of these. So I did swish them all together, but it's not impossible. I mean, we're, you know, comparing it to something like RMS, where they give you like these kitty size little like lip glosses as blushes. It's not impossible. It's just with blush, I like to diffuse things onto my skin. I definitely am glad that I went and diffused them onto my skin because you could use these as eyeshadows. They're that bold. So let's go ahead and get into the footage and we will kind of describe the nature of the shades that I got and my experience with each one. Baby, you will love my life. Oh. So if you see me bopping to the beat in this footage, because I'm always listening to something, it is Harry's house. I want to, I do want to start by saying these came with, as a gift with purchase and they're like static cling to all of these little sequins, but they're the lust glosses in these little heart containers. I will drop the footage in of me trying to use this. It doesn't work. The formula doesn't work in this delivery system. It's a wand that is similar to the wand of the full size, but it is incredibly way, 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 way too flexible. And so you're trying to apply a very thick formula on the shortest wand ever, on a wand that is literally running away from you every time you push it on your lips. It makes you feel like you're being punked. So 
Unfortunately, these little guys, even though they were technically free with my purchase, they're a pass, not because of the shades, but just because the delivery system makes them impossible to use without looking like a fool. They're so cute though. Look at them, little heart eyes. Uh, anyway, first we're going to start with Venusian Sunrise because that was the one that I really felt like if I were only to pick one, I would have bought Venusian Sunrise. It is more pigmented than I thought and all of them, even the ones with the purple in them still pulled more candy pink on my skin than I expected them to. Something that I've gotten feedback on in the past from viewers is not to apply anything except complexion product before I put a blush on to show you guys the nature of the shades. Now I did layer these, which is going to obscure them a little bit, but I didn't apply bronzer or contour until after I put my blush on which is going to make it look really, really stark. I will also say, from the standpoint of my skin tone, everything turns pink on me. So pink is going to turn extra pink, but even purple turns kind of pink because the yellow in my skin tries to cancel it out. I swatched these for you separately, and then I applied them to my face, and you, I'm not sure if you'll see it initially, but like as I go, layer by layer, you will start to see the surprise on my face of how different these are from her original Divine Blush release because as I try to wash them, wash them? Watercolor wash them, sure. We're gonna, we're gonna drape and wash. It's just a much more committed set of shades on my skin tone and I just had to make an adjustment there in my mind. They're different. That said, when I started to apply the next one, which was Aphrodite Amour, I think that I should have swapped them. Aphrodite Amour is the less pigmented, probably the least pigmented of all of them. I don't know because I don't have them in my hands, but it looks like the least pigmented of all of them. Similar in its tone and its saturation to Flirtatious from her original collection. And you guys know, and if you don't, I'll tell you again, Flirtatious was my favorite. It is the most usable, fair, blurring, an unbelievably dialed in, indescribable kind of like rosy lavender on my skin that just blows my mind every single time that I use it. Somehow it's both cool toned and it infuses my skin with like this healthy kind of glow. Absolutely beautiful. So I think that this one is my favorite of the three and probably the one I'll continue to reach for the most because it does lend itself so well to over application. The other two are increasingly saturated, but I would say that Aphrodite Amour is the one that I can use to blur the edges, the one to kind of dampen things down just a touch. Now, if I were to really want to dampen things down, I would still reach for one of her older blushes because they kind of lend themselves better to that. But if you are looking for the lightest and the fairest and kind of the coolest toned of this entire collection, I would say your eyes do not deceive you. Aphrodite Amour is the one. And then finally, I applied Divine Rose 2, obviously, kind of the iteration of the Divine Rose blush that she released with the first collection. And I will say, this is probably the one that I will get the least use out of. One of them had to be the bottom of the three, and it's mainly just because it is pink on pink. I really was hoping for something that surprised me a little bit more than this, but I have to say this is exactly what I expected when I saw it. It's hot pink and coral. Pink turns pink and coral turns pink and everything turns pink. And I had kind of a candy bubblegum pink thing going on on my cheeks to begin with in this look. And this really took it right over the top. So I just had to lean into it, but that was okay because I was planning to use the Hutopian Dream Palette to do my eye look today, and that is what I did. And so I just really leaned into the pink of it all, but I was very, very careful to keep this only on the high points of my cheeks and not use it like a Fjords blush. I'm aware now that there are new people, enough new people on my channel that like the Fjords thing isn't translating anymore. When I'm working with a particular type of shade. This is my Fjords aside. When I'm working with a particular shade and it tends to be a cool leaning, bricky berry kind of color, it gives my skin a natural looking flush, almost ruddy look to my skin, like I've gone and taken a couple of laps <laughs> I'm sorry, in cold weather, as if I were running through the fjords. 
I am laughing because I just remembered that someone sent me a video when I was feeling at my absolute worst on Sunday and it is a man trying to run on fjords and it is the funniest thing that I've ever seen and I will stick it in because it absolutely slayed me. I can't believe, I mean, we have really, really done it, haven't we? Like, the internet has everything, even a man trying to run through fjords and I will say it ain't pretty, but it's possible. Yes, I always say it's like, a Nordic child running through the fjords because that was just my my vision of my skin like oh I'm so pale but I'm so healthy so yeah that's the fjords thing and when I do that I take it where my cheeks would naturally flush right so I actually take it kind of down in this like triangular shape you know kind of up here and all the way down the point being I did not do that with this because this is not a naturally occurring color in my skin you can see it kind of glowing off my skin and it's very clearly makeup. I have no problem with that, but it looks it looks like I'm doing something editorial on my skin. I'm deciding that I want my cheeks to be a certain color, not trying to trick you into thinking that I woke up looking like this, you know? So all that, all that to say, all that context to say, this is definitely, the Divine Rose 2 is definitely not, to me, in the, the Divine Rose family. It's not the way that I was thinking of all of her Divine Rose releases thus far, being these extremely nuanced, mucky, mauvey, beautiful, pinky, rosy purples. This is like, eh, with a little bit of eh. <laughs> You know, and I think that it's going to probably be that beautiful, mucky, mauvey, divine rose kind of thing on deeper skin than mine. You know, it just glows on me. So let's, let's just compare kind of the ones that I paired, right? After I dropped them all on the floor. I have nude Venus. Did I buy, I think I bought divine, I have four of these. Oh, dead gum. That's right, I did buy another one. I forgot it! How do you forget that you bought a Pat McGrath blush? But I did. Nope, that's not it. Oh no! See, that's the thing is I love Flirtatious so much that it's in heavy rotation, which means it could be anywhere! Ah, ah, ah. It was in my blush drawer because sometimes even Aries do things that make sense. I'm going to take Nude Venus out of the equation here. Carpenter bees, man. They're so dumb. <laughs> They're like the dumbest creatures on earth. They're just like doink, doink, doink. <laughs> like, nope, that is not wood. Taking Nude Venus out because it's not really comparable to the collection that I bought here. I didn't buy anything that was in that kind of apricot-y family. So let's go ahead and compare here, starting with our two divine roses. Excuse me, what? 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 <laughs> yeah, those are really different. So that's Divine Rose 1 from the original Divine Blush, and this will be a melange, a, a, a swisheroo of my finger in both shades of the Divine Rose 2. That should tell you all you need to know. <laughs> like, we're just talking about a totally different color profile that has a lot more like pink and red in it, and just probably twice the saturation, twice like the um, pure pigment versus kind of soft, mucky muddiness. I think muddiness is good. Muddiness is great on me because it doesn't lay down a whole bunch of detectable pigment, but like it's also what can pull ashy on deep skin. So, so the next one we're gonna compare is going to be Aphrodite Amour versus my <laughs> very well loved Flirtatious. I honestly think that what this look needs is still Flirtatious because Flirtatious would just like bring this down to earth, but we're not on earth right now. We're on the mothership. Clearly, again, quite different, but and this is this, these are, aren't titled anything similar to each other. And so I'm merely comparing these because I think they're the most comparable. This is just my opinion. You can definitely see that Flirtatious is very similar to the rose stamped shade right there. So let's go ahead and swiggity swatch those. And it might be that these are duos that are kind of meant to have like one old shade and one new shade together in them. I'm not really sure. I don't think that she would do that where she would just like purely repeat a color, but those two, the, the rose printed shade does look really similar to Flirtatious. There you can see yet again, we're talking about more pink, just a lot more pink because obviously one side of it is pink. <laughs> 
Isn't that crazy how that works? <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, you start to see... Uh-oh. My child is home with diarrhea. He's down there with his grandmother. I don't know what that was. Yeah, you can see that it's a lot more pigmented and it's not even... I keep saying more pigmented. It has more like volume to the color. It's a louder version of a color than kind of these original muddy tones, which is why I liked them so much. And then finally, we will compare Nymphette, which is the, the brightest one that I got in the original collection, to the brightest one that I, actually, I'm not even sure that it's the brightest one, but I just wanted to, you know, Divine Rose versus Divine Rose. But um, yeah, we're going to put Venusian Sunrise against Nymphette. Nymphette is a little bit shimmery versus the other two, and I have always said it's kind of the more main character energy, focal point kind of color out of all of the ones that I had. But as you can clearly see, Venusian Sunrise is a pinky pink pink pink. A pink, a pinky, I would almost say pink. Yeah, I mean, you can see every other one, just the differences in the formulas, the differences in the saturation. And I know I'm beating a dead horse here. I've been saying the same thing the whole time, but I, I know that there are people in the comments who were probably going to ask me to do that comparison because describe, some people are visual and some people are auditory. I just want you guys to be able to get the information that you need. Trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to include before I talked final thoughts on these. Let's actually just chat claims on this real quick. Blush like an icon in dreamily draped dimensional color with limited edition divine blush duos. Petal soft touch, feather light, buildable and blendable, mistake proof application, vivid color purity. What a much better way of saying it, Pat. I'm sitting here like volume. Uh. It has vivid color purity. Color purity. It's a lot purer of vividness in color than the first ones. Demi matte and satin pearl finishes all day wear soft focus effect. You get 9.7 grams or 0.34 ounces. Turn your cheeks on with these modern vibrant shades, each expertly blended to beautify all skin tones. So, so I am glad that Pat says that they are more vividly pure in their color. I think that that's a very good way of describing it. I would say that they just, it all happens a lot faster, which probably means that it's going to be more deep and dark skin friendly than the previous release. And I also think that's a really good thing because that means that they're not the same. And like I said, I don't feel like this is like a gimmicky release. Do I think that it is better or worse than the previous release for my personal makeup use? I probably only would have gotten Aphrodite more and stuck with the original blushes because I do feel like they are so fair skin friendly. And I also think that the ones that I got kind of all do something very, very similar in the sense of how gosh darn pink they are. That is such a big bug. What is that? It's on the other side, but ooh, I don't like it. Now, there are other shades in the collection that I didn't buy, but I would say Cosmic Coral looks like it could be a little bit like Nude Venus, you know, just like that deeper, more saturated version. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. What kind of bug are you? I don't like it. I don't even like that you exist near me. Oh, it's so large. What is it? Oh, it's so distracting. Go away. And then the bronzer shade, the Paradise Glow, I, I do still kind of want to try it. It's really, really pretty. I just thought that I wanted to buy, like I said, I wanted to buy things that were more comparable to the previous ones that I had. And uh, Night Bloom is, <clears throat> it looks just like someone turned the saturation way up on Venusian Sunrise and made it for like actually, you know, dark skin tones. So all that to say, I am not sure that there is like the diversity of undertones in these blushes in actual practical application once they get on the skin as the first release. So while I think that my collection was, you know, incomplete without like four <laughs> of the original ones, I probably could live with only one of these. And I think that most people could live with only one of these, possibly two if you're really, really into the idea of that bronzer shade. But like, there's going to be probably one that blows your mind. It's not gonna be a case of like, oh my God, give me all of them, you know? So that's probably 
valuable for your wallet at least. For me, if I were going back shopping, I would absolutely just go Aphrodite and more. It's a lot easier for me to wear and it does have like a really fun kind of punch to that pink, but it's really balanced out and it's just not as saturated, which is, you know, pretty much what you guys would have expected to hear, right? But the main thing here is, you know, I was expecting them to be that same incredible velvety, just vanishingly gorgeous soft, soft, soft formula, because that's, I feel like what makes them so special. There are beautiful colors of blush out there. There are beautiful formulas of blush. There's beautiful packaging. There's, you know, brilliant people making br blush, br brush, making blush all the time. But this formula is what's incredibly, incredibly special. Somehow it is so soft and so finely milled, never hard pans. It's, it's like, the Hindash palette, except it's somehow a little more emollient and more, well, I shouldn't say it's more blurring because they're both really, really blurry. It's kind of like, the, they're honestly pretty similar to the Hindash palette in a blush. And the answer to that very, very long and winding question is yes, the new ones, even though they are more vivid, they are still that same unbelievably beautiful velvety application and that blurring finish. So that pleases me greatly but they're different. And I think that that's a good thing. <laughs> and will I continue using them? Absolutely. I probably will find, you know, some friends who have different undertones and different like deeper skin tones to pass some of the like brighter ones along to. Most likely it would be Divine Rose 2. It's just too, too for me. It's too pink, it's too vivid, and it's pink on pink. It just does not have enough balance to it. And I, I mean, it's pretty clear to see that's not my color. And even if it's a color I want to wear in an eyeshadow, I have that in the Utopian Dream palette. I don't, like, this is definitely not a shade that I would buy again, but live and learn. And that's why I have this channel is so that I have a heaving, overwhelming stash that is, you know, self-aware and haunting me in my sleep. And you don't have to. I hope that this was valuable for you guys. And uh, if it was, give it, a th give it a thumbs up for me. And if you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. Guys, I got this the new Charlotte Tilbury. They sent this to me. I reached out to them and I was like, I can't get shade one anywhere. And they actually sent this to me. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to throw to me doing my hair like this for you guys real quick. And we will come back and I will say bye-bye. Hello, ask and you shall receive. So I'm tying off and dividing my hair here. You can do it any way you want. But the main thing here is each side, I start it low underneath my ear and I twist it away from my face the way you would, you know, curling your hair with a curling iron. But as soon as you flip it around, it's gonna look like it's coming forward, almost like a French twist. The key here is to really leave it loose. Like kind of anytime you're seeing a little bit of a challenge and it's like not doing what you want it to do, release a little bit of tension because that's what makes this look so effortless and it's gonna look kind of bonkers when you first do it. Like you're gonna see in a second that when I get both sides pinned up, it looks a little weird and just plan for adjustments to the shape, but I basically just twist it up, loosen it, pin it down on top of my head. It's a sloppy thing. And then I just do the same thing with the other side and just try and make them as even as I can. But again, I mean, there's still room to work with it. So, then I am taking bobby pins and just adjusting that shape as far as the silhouette is concerned. I just keep kind of looking at it in the mirror and checking it and, you know, seeing if it's a flattering shape on my head, pinning here, pinning there. And if you are kind of unfamiliar with updo pinning, it's just pinning against where the hair is. So it's like you kind of push against the grain of the hair and it'll sort of lock it into place instead of trying to use bobby pins like you would like a hair clip. And you know, I can't really totally see what I'm doing. So bobby pins are gonna show and that's totally fine. But this is actually really comfortable. Like if it's uncomfortable, loosen it. It's supposed to be a really, really casual thing. And then you can see I really have just about no hair. I just happen to have length to work with at this point. So. I am taking a few more bobby pins and just hiding the ends. And I do that sort of by twisting them in the direction that the hair is already going on the top of my head so that it's easier to hide them. But I don't really mind if they stick out 
a little bit. And sometimes I do this with a braid. Sometimes if I'm feeling really fancy, I will put extensions in and make really fat braids to do this. And I've done that in videos before too, but this is the easiest way to do it. And I'm just making a couple of little final adjustments to make sure that it feels secure, but still really, really loose. And that's it. And now I will bid you adieu, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And I will see you in the next one.